Hello and good morning, lovelies. How are you today? I hope you're having a lovely one, wherever you are. If you're new here, I'm Liz. And, um, yeah, I sit down and I talk about some true crime. This is creating crime time, a crime time. Um, yeah. So, we've been talking about the case of Ed Gingrich and Katie Gingrich. Or Katie Shelter, that's her, that's her maiden name. So, part one, we... Sorry. Kind of just okay. Part one, um, we started talking about like him and Katie, and Katie moving to Brown Hill and getting into Ed's mental state. Well, and we I specifically left off with the part where Ed thinks that Katie is the devil. So we are now going to get into the actual crime. If you didn't see part one, I'll put it in the card up up here. It'll be on this side, I think. Yeah, I always point in the wrong direction. Don't mind me. I'm just very, very awkward. Okay, so yes. We're going to go to 1993. So the 18th of March of 1993. This is actually Katie's birthday. So Katie... She tries to get Ed um, help by having an English woman drive him to the chiropractor because he's been a little bit more off. And after like a little bit in the day goes by, Ed comes back. Obviously, the chiropractor can't do anything for him because, you know, he's a paranoid schizophrenic. Well, Katie then tells Ed that she's excited to attend a wedding that night in their community because somebody she knows is getting married and she tells Ed that he can't go because she's afraid that he is going to have a freak out and that he is too unstable to go. Well, Ed doesn't like that answer and he, he goes into the living room and he falls asleep. Once he wakes up, he walks into the kitchen and Katie is standing in front of the in front of the sink, she turns around and sees Ed, and he just cold clocks her right in the face, and she lands on the ground. Now, their six-year-old daughter, Mary, sees this from afar, and Katie yells to Danny to go to his uncle's house, to Ed's brother's house, to get some help. And Danny runs out of the house, and the uncle's house is about a mile away. Ultimately, this leaves Katie with Ed and Ed not knowing that Mary's there watching this whole thing go down, which, uh, like I said, with Mary, she becomes more of a character in this, this murder because she sees the actual thing happen. So at this point, Ed has officially snapped. He, he has snapped. He's not, he's not normal Ed anymore. This is his paranoia that's taken over. So, obviously Katie's on the ground. He goes outside and puts on some high top boots. And he returns to Katie and he starts stomping on her head. Well, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Ed's brother gets there. He goes into the house. He comes inside. He's shocked to see his brother covered in blood, looks down and sees the state of Katie and runs out of the house and calls 911. And he, when he calls 911, he said that there, there's homicide in process. So when the cops arrived and they start going down the road, they see a man covered in blood carrying a child and walking like holding hands with the mother this person is ed and he's carrying six-year-old mary and he's walking with ennis well they cuff him they put him in the back of the cruiser when the first ems officer goes inside this person runs right back out because they are horrified with what they see so 
half of Katie's skull was missing due to how bad he stomped on her head, but that's not it. Her brain matter was everywhere. There was like, there was like nothing left to her brain. Also, Ed made an incision from the base of her neck to the pit of her stomach, and he removed every single internal organ from her body and piled them next to her corpse. One of the officers there said that her body didn't look human, and Every officer that dealt with this case has had a hard time trying to not see what they saw that day, now till this day. So they brought Ed to the precinct and they tried to question him, but he's still in a deranged state. Like he still doesn't, he doesn't know fully what he's done. He doesn't know Katie's dead. And he also doesn't remember murdering her. That's the, the biggest thing. He doesn't remember it at all. And they had to tell him that she was dead. At moments he would understand. And there's other moments where he didn't understand. And he was often bringing up God and the devil. So they decide to charge him with murder. And he is then transferred to a mental institution. That way he can get the modern medicine he needs. So his lawyer goes and visits him at one point and he's seen holding a piece of clothing. His lawyer asks him why he's holding this, this piece of clothing. And he said, this part of Katie's dress. So he's literally holding on to his wife's like basically lifeline to him after he mutilated his, her corpse. So a year goes by and his trial begins in March of 1994 and it comes out that he is schizophrenic and that he was very, he was extremely difficult to console during trial. He was like off and on crying. He was having fits. It was decided that he would be guilty of manslaughter, but he was found mentally ill. He was sentenced to five years for the manslaughter charge. Um, but again, he was, he was found guilty, but not sane at the, t at the time of the murder. So while he was in prison, he obviously, he received treatment for his schizophrenia and he starts to begin to like understand what he did to Katie. And he starts to write to his family and the Bishop of Brown Hill in hopes for his forgiveness from them, but he never receives a response from them. So after he does his sentence of five years, he's released. He tries to return to Brown Hill, but he is shunned because of what he's done. And he he's not allowed to go to his home community, which is something he's always known. Um, because of this, he is then placed with a new Amish community in Michigan. But here, he ends up receiving a medication that's not the same as the original and his episodes start again. He is then kicked out. Now, flash forward to 2007. Ed is invited to stay with his brother and Brown in Brown Hill. And now this means that his brother will also be shunned by the community. This, this split the community in half because half of them are still reeling from what happened with Katie and half of them feel bad for Ed because of his mental illness, even though they shouldn't feel bad for them. And then there's another portion of the community that feels for his family because they can't heal because they can't be with him because he was shunned out of their community. Now, him and his brother, they lived in the outskirts of Brown Hill. So like right outside of, of the actual like little community and his sons, Danny and Ennis, they would sneak off to see him, but they're not the ones he wanted to see. He wanted to see his daughter, Mary. And at this time, Mary is 17. She's living with her grandparents and she's not allowed to talk to Ed. She's not allowed to see him, talk to him, anything. Now, 
Ed and, and his brothers believe that they need to speak because Mary's the one that saw her father kill her mother. And she's utterly terrified of him. So they decide to hatch this plan to abduct her, bring her to a remote cabin so she can talk to her dad. And when they bring her here, now this is an isolated hunting cabin in like central Pennsylvania. They bring her far away from Brown Hill. Brown Hill's in northwestern Pennsylvania. They bring her to central Pennsylvania. She's absolutely terrified of her father and she does not want to talk to him. She doesn't want, she doesn't want to relive the memories of her mother's death, which unfortunately that's what happens when she sees her father. When she sees her father for the first time since all this has happened. All those memories come back. She wants absolutely nothing to do with him. The bishop learns about their plan of abduct, abducting Mary and making her talk to her dad. And the bishop calls the police and they end up arresting the brothers and Ed. Now, Ed ends up um, getting probation. The brothers are released. And he Ed ends up getting six months of probation. Now, the bishop brings forth an ultimatum to his brothers. You have Ed leave and you'll be unshunned from the community. Or you're, you're all shunned and you can't return. And Ed ultimately leaves on his own accord and he ends up moving in with his attorney. And the attorney's name is George. So... It's after this that his mental health really continues to dwindle. And there is one day in 2011 when he's he's supposed to go out to the horse barn and feed the horses. Well, George ends up leaving because he wants to go to go hunting and Ed was alone. So George calls his wife to go check on Ed. And this is also because Ed wasn't taking his medication. This concerned George because he doesn't want anything bad to happen to him. He, out of the kindness of his own heart, has taken this man in who has a lot of shame and guilt from what he's done. And he just wants to make sure that Ed's okay. So George's wife goes and checks on him in the horse barn and that's when she finds him hanging from a beam in the horse farm. He had hung himself. He did leave a suicide note on top of a horse treat uh, container. There was dirt on it, so he ended up writing, please forgive me, on it. Now, per his family, they wanted him buried in the Amish cemetery in Brown Hill. And thankfully, Brown Hill agreed, and Ed would be rightfully placed next to Katie. Now, I know that sounds strange, him being rightfully placed next to Katie, but Katie was his wife. You can think of me in a strange way, but if he was properly treated, I don't think Katie would have died. Um, and a lot of, a lot of things in our lives are sugar-coated and mental illness is one of them. If you know anybody that is having an issue that seems to be changing, they are depressed, simply talk to them and ask them how they feel and just guide, help guide them in the right direction. You can't force their hand to try and get help. All you can do is help guide them in the right way. Because if you try and force them, it will make the situation worse. So that, my friends, is murder in Amish country. That is the gruesome murder of Katie Gingrich and the death of Ed Gingrich. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's, today's crazy case. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye, guys.